Marine ecosystems are under threat. Nowhere is this more clearly seen than in changes to the natural behaviour of marine organisms. Our team at the University of Essex and the Centre for the Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science are developing new tools to better understand movement across different scales, revealing how human disturbance can be so disruptive. Over the next few minutes, the team will be introducing you to the three core messages of our research. Movement is essential for survival. Marine organisms need to find mates, they need to find food which may be ephemeral or patchy, and they need to be able to escape predators. Even apparently immobile animals often can move vast distances via larval dispersal phase or even attached to other animals. And don't forget the little ones. There is a whole world of tiny organisms out there, such as plankton, and their movements are hugely important to any healthy ecosystem. The ocean is no longer untouched by human activity. Organism movements are being disrupted by dams, shipping traffic, noise, pollution and heat waves. Humans are also moving organisms into new habitats, impacting ecosystem functions. Now we're going to tell you about some of the ways we're studying the movements of ocean travellers. I'm Philippe Lesseau and I would like to show you one of the tools we use to observe and analyse movement in the ocean. Now, while whales and fish are rather obvious, there are many marine organisms that are so tiny that we need powerful magnifying glasses to be able to observe them. By using these microscopes, we can follow their shape and their movement and reveal an entire dramatic world that is unseen to our naked eye. And while they are little, the role that these tiny creatures play is huge. For example, these single-celled algae can live on their own, freely moving about, or they can live inside of corals in a partnership that benefits both. But with climate change, heat waves in the oceans cause these algae to leave the coral in a process called coral bleaching. And this is often the beginning of the end for the coral. Or here, we have barnacle larvae moving about, trying to find the best place to settle, which could well be the hull of a ship. So, movement is essential at all scales, and we can't afford to ignore the very little ones. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Bailey, I'm a mathematician, and I'm interested in the paths that animals take. We can determine lots of interesting things. We can find out how far the animals moved, we can also find out how fast the animal is moving. Now that helps us determine things like energy use, so perhaps how recently the animal has fed and how much the animal has fed, and also how much the animal needs to feed. We can also determine things like space use, finding out how much the animal has explored the local area. From this we can determine things like home range behaviour, that tells us the neighbourhood that the animal likes to explore. If it's foraging, so if it's feeding, if it's hunting, or maybe if it's, if it's being hunted. And finally we can also try and understand phenomena like group movement. So we know that there are large shoals of fish who will swim together. Now they somehow all tend to swim in the same direction, but individually they might want to head off in their own way. Now somehow we need to figure out how they do that. Now why we do this is really important. Perhaps we're interested in maybe putting a dam in a river, maybe we want to build something in the ocean, maybe we want to add some shipping lanes, and we're interested to find out well how is that going to affect everything else living under the sea. My name is Dr Serena Wright and I'm a fishery scientist from the Centre for Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science. My work focuses on trying to better understand the behaviour and ecology of fish species using things called electronic tags like these. Now these allow us to track fish in their natural environments. For example, we've been recently working with governments in the South Atlantic to better understand tuna behaviour. Tunas are pretty much the poster child for macro scale movements. They can migrate thousands of miles within a year, crossing entire ocean basins. They basically do that to, to migrate between those key grounds like that they use for spawning and for feeding. They've got amazingly streamlined bodies and crescent moon-shaped tails, which are perfect for long distance movements. And they also are one of the few species that can generate their own body heat, which allows them to hunt even in the coldest and darkest environments. Why do we use tags anyway? Well, tags allow us to understand lots of different information about fish. Not only things like growth, so how fast they grow on a daily and monthly or yearly basis, 
for how deep they can dive, how far they can travel within a day or over the different seasons and what drives those movements. All of that information helps us to better understand and protect fish populations. My name is Dr Anna Sturrock and I'm a fish ecologist and a UKRI Future Leaders Fellow. So when we think about tracking macro scale movements in the ocean, we typically think about tagging the animal in some way. But some individuals and some species are just very difficult to tag. Soft bodied species such as octopuses, deep sea fishes that don't like to be brought to the surface, and very early life stages that are just too small to attach a tag to. For those kind of animals, it really helps to use natural tags, such as genetic markers or chemical traces in their body tissues. And so what we use are otoliths, which are ear stones of the fish, and the eye lenses. Now both of these grow in layers, and so you can look at these layers just like a tree trunk to look at how old the fish was and how fast it was growing at different time points in its life. But we can also look at chemical traces in those layers to look at where the fish was from which habitats it used, which temperatures experienced, what it ate, and if it encountered any pollutants. So I've been using these approaches to track the movements of fish such as salmon and sea bass and understand the contribution rates of these important nursery habitats to the adult stock. If we know that certain habitats are performing really well, then we can put protection measures in place there. If they're performing really badly, then we can restore them or put in remediation efforts. You've heard some of the reasons why movement is so important to marine organisms and some of the ways that human activity can impact free movement. But actually there's more to it than that. Humans can move otherwise immobile species around the world's oceans, introducing them beyond their natural geographic ranges. We then call these species introduced or non-indigenous species and they can have serious impacts on natural ecosystems. One of the main ways that these species move around the world's waters is with global shipping. Shipping is vital to modern society. Almost everything in this room will have been on a container ship at some point. But it's also an easy way for stowaways to transport themselves, either in the ballast water of ships or attached to the ship hulls in biofouling communities. Shipping also releases about 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions, so it's crucially important that we keep the hulls of ships clean and they're moving efficiently through the world's oceans. My research studies larval settlement ecology, that is, how the larvae of these biofouling organisms select the surfaces they want to attach to. In fact, my research focuses on developing more environmentally harmonious so-called anti-fouling coatings that these larvae can't attach to and therefore prevent them being transported around the oceans. We've heard about some of the fascinating ways that researchers are studying the movement of marine organisms and just how important these movements are in connecting species, individuals and populations into one cohesive ecosystem. From micro to macro, the ocean relies on all of its organisms to carry out their roles, humans included. The ocean covers the majority of our planet's surface. Therefore, we rely on it for many resources, like food, energy, and even the air we breathe. We're continually learning about the impacts that humans are having, both directly and indirectly, on our ocean travelers. From unregulated fishing activities that are depleting fish stocks to the El Nino heat waves that are bleaching our corals, these are challenges that we're tackling with policymakers to explore solutions for the future. Although we live on land, the ocean provides so much for us and needs us to care for it. Through our exhibit, we want to inspire you to learn more about the ocean and join us in looking after it. Simple things like reducing plastic waste and energy consumption will help keep our ocean healthy and our ocean travellers moving. <laughs>